Hi everybody, Adrian Plus here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. And this is number 131 <laughs> yes, it is. of Sounding the Shadows. Someone uh, pointed out to us just recently that surely we're coming up to 200, including oh. the first, ah. know, so the, the No Shore in Sight ones. Um, but I think we're a bit off that so far. But be sure we'll let you know when, we get, <laughs> when I get my double, double century, as the English and the Pakistanis are doing at the moment, um, then we'll let you know, right? Yeah. yeah, it was really interesting. We've had one or two emails about the little things that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. And I was delighted, Adrian, that two people agreed with me about drinking tea from fine china. It must be a, a wonderful novelty for you to find <laughs> people agreeing with yeah, you. Yeah, it was. It? Yeah. No, it was great. It was a and, joke, uh, our lovely uh, friend who puts this onto YouTube and onto our website was saying he agreed with me. So there you go. And he's got two mugs that he particularly likes. One is from Canterbury Cathedral and another one that had that special value because it was given to him by a pastor friend. He then pointed out that his lovely wife um, bought two mugs with cats on, obviously hoping to uh, equal the ones from Canterbury Cathedral, but yeah. you know, though clearly they didn't. And he continues to go with the two that he loves, apart from an old mug that they've had for years and years, which reminds him of of the past. I was interesting to see that he bought them at an, in an op shop. No, that then, was the Robin one. That was yeah, the the, the ones with cats. Yeah, from yes. an op shop, and um, I, I was hoping, he did, and he did explain that's the same as our charity, charity shops. shops, isn't yeah. it? So in yeah. Australia, you go to an op shop. You do. To look for stuff. I don't know if that's short for opportunity or whatever, but there was another lovely one from Australia, which amused me because this person was talking about not just liking the teacups, but also um, she says she's got a beautiful natured border collie and golden retriever. And when they spot butterflies in the backyard in Sydney, they stop what they're doing and sit mesmerised for the few moments that the butterfly visits. I don't know, it was so lovely that they tilt their heads and look at them in wonder like little children discovering something new. I thought that was really sweet A because very, we're very in... very, lovely thought, wasn't it? It was yeah. lovely thought, but it also made me think, yeah, lovely weather, beautiful, where you sit and you watch your dogs outside with yes, watching yeah. butterflies because it's a bit cold here, isn't it? Yeah. And there was another one on uh, Wednesday. Somebody else we know actually met up for coffee with a very nice friend. That's nice, isn't it? And that's one of the little things we certainly like, isn't it? And she said, I don't see her as often as I used because she's recovering from an illness. Um, and I admired the way she coped. And she's been saying for a while that what's being able, what's being, been, been able what's to help helped her, her is the little things. And, and she said, this has become her philosophy. Like me, she loves the natural world and she finds delight in such things as putting out food for the hedgehog. And this reminds me of our hedgehog. Oh, yeah, we haven't got to him now. Putting out but... food for the hedgehog that lives in a garden or on seeing the first red admiral butterfly mm. of the season. And, and this also chimes with us, she finds pleasure in an especially good cup of coffee. Oh, yes. She's a bit of a connoisseur. And, uh, and also short stays in Gloucestershire, which we know well, with her husband, whom yes. she loves dearly. So that person's got some very nice things in yeah. her. Yeah. This thing about the, things. uh yeah, th th those odd moments. You know, one of my s loveliest memories, and, mm. and I'd be interested to know if other people have memories like this, but was going mm. shopping with your mum in the spring to buy a primula mm. plant. You know... We neither of us had any money, really, she and I. So it was very important that we bought one primrosy plant in yeah. a pot. But which one? And we would look at all of them. And she would finally choose, usually something pinky purple. And I would finally choose. And then it was so special. We'd have a cup of coffee together. And we mm. would have had a great outing. She taught me so much mm. about enjoying the moment. Both of our mothers were very good at that, weren't they? Yeah. Doing that. 
Um, I also hearing about the the birds reminded me that we were out uh, just a couple of days ago in the park near here, where there's a lovely lake, and we came across a couple, married couple, um, putting food out in a place specially reserved for birds, and the delight they took in these birds was really quite amazing yeah. there was such joy in their faces yeah. it was really really wonderful yeah. and we had a little chat and realized we all liked feeding birds and <laughs> putting stuff out for birds yeah. so that was very nice yeah and there were i mean there were there was a robin who was there all the time and yeah. then there were various other blue tits chaffinches blue yeah it was uh, a magical lots of moment birds, yeah. i think maybe all these things are important because actually i mean I mean, I know that two of the emails were from Australia, where I'm not sure things are going quite as badly as they are here. But this week, I listened to the news this morning, and it was utterly depressing. You know, the strikes and the associative misery for people, really. I It just really hit me, as I'm sure it did loads of people. And... I got cross, you know, and I thought, ah, oh, this isn't fair, et cetera, et cetera, because in a way it isn't. But then I thought, well, union leaders, I mean, they have to fight for their members because that's their job, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, but what is sad is that during COVID, the COVID time, there were some horrible things. But one of the things that seemed a little bit different, and I remember us saying we, we hoped it would continue, was was a belief that we were all in the same boat. For once, we were unified. In suffering, in a way. In in suffering, yeah. And um, mm. that doesn't seem to... I mean, well, in, in many areas, it doesn't seem to have lasted. Mm. And I think what people either have forgotten or, or don't care about is that very vigorous activity in one boat that somebody's in, people are in, can easily capsize someone else's little fragile craft that's trying to stay afloat. So yeah. it's not easy. No, really tough, really, really tough. And 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 I did find myself really upset and thinking, well, you know, if if you thought a little more, maybe you would decide to postpone things till after Christmas. It's hard enough for people as it is. But then, as I say. I had to sort of balance that by knowing that people are fighting their corner because they feel other people are fighting theirs. And if you get into that sort of atmosphere, that's what happens, isn't it, really? That you, you've got to fight your corner, otherwise maybe something will be taken away. But by contrast, hmm. there's so many lovely things happening because of the cold and the anxiety. And I know this doesn't apply to you in Australia, but it certainly does here that, that there's a terrible fear of this winter because of the rising prices and, and uh, heating and all the rest of it. And its response from a lot of, and they're not just Christian organisations, they're community yeah, organisations mm -hmm. all over the country saying, we're not going to put up with this, we're going to create a space for people to come and be warm and feel loved and fed. Yeah. Uh, there's some really good things. One I struck me, Adrian, was um, one place which has got a line of, they've installed some dryers so people can wash their clothes and come oh, and get them dry. Idea. Yeah. Because if you think about it, if you yeah. don't want to turn your heating on, yeah. where are you going to dry your clothes? I, you can foresee a situation where people will have to take their clothes off when they get there, dry them, and then put them out to go back over again. Can but you? no, no, I can't. I don't <laughs> want to imagine. It's your imagination. No, 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 no. Believe me, I, I have no, no need to see people who just come out of raging storms. Oh, never mind. Mm -hmm. But I but wish... there are there are and I think I think people coming somewhere where it's warm is a wonderful metaphor, isn't it? Yeah. And um, because no doubt within those contexts there'll be people you can chat to and just of being course. able to go, Oh, isn't this nice? Well and just take away the fear that you're you haven't got to put your own heating That's on. That's right, yeah. Um and but, that I think is creating the we're yeah. all in it together. Reminds me a bit of the Australian days, but only in the sense that we used to go into the shopping malls where the the, the, uh, <laughs> the air corner. conditioning was on and we all went, ah, yeah. as we went through the door oh, and this cold gosh. air went, oh, it was wonderful. Well, I remember in when the first time we went to Queensland, I think I did all my shopping at about six o'clock in the morning yeah. because uh, it was so hot, yeah. 
But and food is st- obviously is still going on, isn't it? Being yeah, well, provided for people. Food banks, but loads of other initiatives as well. And I wish, oh, I really wished, I thought this this morning, I wish some good news coming, more good news coming through about the amazingly quiet things that are happening. I mean, um, mm. uh, locally, um, and I know it's all over the country, Prison Fellowship is a marvellous organisation. And one of the things they're doing, it's called Angel Tree, because but people just, in just prison tell people can't, what, that's, what that's all well, about. It's, it's tricky, isn't it? You're in prison. It doesn't mean you don't love your children, you know, and, and you're not going to be with them for Christmas. And the mm. pain of that for many, many people must be huge. So Angel Tree is just that you have the opportunity to buy a present, which then gets a label from the parent who's in prison. And the child receives a present from their mum mm. or their dad. And it's so small and so huge. Oh, it's massive. Yeah, I, I've spoken to a couple of people who who spent time in prison, including Christmas. And I think it, for some of them, and I mean, obviously they're, they're serving a sentence for something they did, shouldn't have done. But the the thought of a child's hand in your hand and the trust you failed them all oh, it broke my heart mm. sometimes and mm. i'm i'm not but not for one moment uh, saying people shouldn't be punished because that's that's part of the way we survive mm. but um i love the fact that this just picks up something that is really important for people yeah. and that's and just makes one it thing possible. Like there are it. so many things aren't there where where, where, yes, where, where goodness and generosity overcome a hurdle, they see it. You see, somebody saw that, like Jesus saw things. Somebody thought one day, this is awful. A particular person can't give their child a gift. Mm. And then multiplied that in their imagination to all the people who couldn't give their child a gift. Yeah. And instead of leaving it at that, thought, we can do something about this. And that's what I love about all these initiatives, Adrian. Mm. You know, all these wonderful food initiatives at the moment. And the dryers, you know. Yeah. What is it that is going to be driving people mad, mm. not being able to get their clothes dry? Yeah. I mean, it's such a small and huge thing. Well, I, the thing, I, I think it's the same thing, but I love the fact that it, it, it reaches individuals. It's not one of those vast projects. Uh, that that loses itself in its vastness and mm. obviously as we always do i was thinking about jesus and i thought he never as far as i can tell and i was actually sitting today thinking through the new testament the you know the, the gospels, gospels which i i don't know that you know as well as i i could do but trying to think of times when the bigger picture as you might call it mm. the task the big task mm ever stopped him from making sure that someone who was suffering mm. um, would be in some way looked after mm. and that this, this vastness and urgency of this world saving mm. mission um, would couldn't be sacrificed because somebody who he noticed suddenly mm. needed him mm. There are, there are lots of examples. Mm. I mean, one of your favourites, I know, is the widow of Nain, isn't it? Because you love you love those words, his heart went out to her. And I was thinking about that, Adrian. I was thinking, obviously, there's the grief. Mm. Um, she's a widow already and her son has died. So there's her, her immediate grief. But there's also her total future economically i mean how will she survive without her son able to work for her mm. um and she'd already lost her husband yeah she'd already lost her husband i mean uh you know the story of naomi and ruth and, and naomi needing to go back to bethlehem because she'd heard that there wasn't a famine there we you know we, <laughs> these situations that jesus it wasn't romantic i think is what i'm trying to say it wasn't a romantic oh i'll do this nice thing mm. it was it was seeing it was just noticing people. noticing and, and seeing and, and finding a solution now that was miracles well that was weird wasn't it i mean as we've often said it, it's 
pretty bad counselling to say, don't worry, don't, <laughs> don't, don't mm. cry. But um, he actually had the power to change something pretty dramatically. But that wasn't the main point. The main point was that there was no division between the importance of somebody he passed mm. as he went along mm. and the, 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 the great big job he had come to do. Mm. And uh, well, as I thought, there are loads of them. The, the, the woman with the issue of blood, she's oh, another one who... I talked about her last time. I know, yeah. she's another one who in heaven probably is going to say, I'm not just the woman with the issue of blood, you know. <laughs> I mean, I think well, probably would wouldn't use that language. No, no, you pro pro probably <laughs> wouldn't. It's very no. odd, really. But as yeah. I thought through them, and other people I'm sure would think of things, that it's, it involves people up trees... Yes, um, people up trees. Yeah, people One up trees. person well, up a tree. No, I mean the, the various people. <laughs> people up trees. People on the roadside. Yes. Who other people were trying to shut up because they were interfering with him. His yeah. his ministry. A word I'm by more annoying the older I get. Um, uh, people next to pools, or what you're going to say, one pool, okay, but man next to a pool. I didn't say anything. Um, <laughs> and people behaving inappropriately at parties, mm. Mm. Um, uh, mm. all sorts of things. Mm. Um, people about to get stoned, mm. which we've often mentioned, of course. Mm. Um, and it, it's very warming to me and very encouraging that when people are trying to sort out how you be a Christian, you know, mm. what mm. what projects could we start? And I, I'm nothing against projects, but um, someone said to me this not very long ago, said, why is it that a lot of projects, that, that's Christian projects I'm mm -hmm. talking about, get started, not all, by any means, but a significant number, seem to fizzle after um, a very promising and well-organized beginning you get some people together and you mm. say here we've noticed this problem that there is and we i think we could get we could get something organized to make sure that it's dealt with in some way mm -hmm. and at first everyone's energized and alive and then um they just fizzle they mm. they die mm. so mm. and and I, I we talked about why that might be and mm. we we sort of touched on what and we're what talking did about you think? today well, I don't even know how to put it, but maybe projects, lives, um, what we call vision, mm. has to be prepared to stop at the roadside. Um, oh, absolutely. At a time when it really doesn't look like a very good mm. idea. Well, I mean, sometimes. I think a good example, at the very beginning of the church, which we've talked about before, where there's some blinking argument about... Greek widows and, and food and things and they stopped at the roadside if you like they said this is important this needs our focus otherwise everything will go wrong yeah um, what are we going right. to do about this let's get some really good people to look mm. at that mm. instead of wafting it aside because they've got mm. a vision make it important make that make important. it important yeah, yeah. so we that maybe we 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 put our hobby horses and our little mild obsessions and our personal dreams and the way we always see things and big picture thinking. We don't abandon them, but we put them on a shelf. Mm. And when we mentioned this story a while ago, something we saw in Bolivia, when, when a little girl needs her hair brushed, a, a bus stops and people get off and they go and do something that must have surprised her. Or, or from a poem I wrote and I should think more about the, the funny little woman on the Friday bus maybe she needs to mean more to me than I do to myself mm. that was that was what mm. I said and um, it, yeah I, I mean that's really important I of think. course it is and it means sometimes really I mean like I said I felt quite cross this morning about the news and then I thought somehow we have to try to turn our thinking upside down and try and see it how Jesus sees things and uh, and and kind of understand in a way that maybe I wasn't this morning and I know that um, certainly coming up to this Christmas uh, in particular I think uh, there's this different focus in me to look at people who maybe have gotten a mess, people who maybe are doing things that we disapprove of or that we we think is silly. I mean, uh, 
you know, maybe putting all your hope in a football team instead of mm. looking at the real me- meaning of Christmas, you know. Trying to create Christmas by buying loads and loads of stuff mm. and, and, and just, you know, doing their best. Mm. Doing their best to find something to feel passionate about, something to lift their spirits. And yeah. I don't know, I, I, I just think, just like Jesus looked at Jerusalem and wept, that, you know, this is our world. And and maybe maybe it is possible to make a bit of difference to the person who's on the cash out in a supermarket and is exhausted and a bit mm. grumpy and glaring away because they've got another four hours to go before they can go home. Mm. It is it is almost miraculous how if you offer people a little warmth mm. it can just quite crackle for a while. Yeah. So Lots talking about little things, I mean what are God's favourite little things? Uh, pretty obvious, isn't it? When you when you think of that list of people, it's people. Yeah. God so loved the world and yeah. each one is important and that's the blessing mm. and the burden for Christians, mm. of course, that um Every person is important, and it mm. can be very hard work sometimes. Yeah, and, but and challenging. Which we is... don't have power, but we can make a difference. Yeah, I mean that's totally an well interesting yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah. So oh, there gosh. we are, and time is passing. We're nearly I at Christmas. We nearly are. But we will see you next week. We will. Goodbye. Bye bye.